ladies and gentlemen, please, if you would be so kind to return to the party. With all this excitement out here... I believe that is an end to the excitement, as you put it, Monsieur Demir. Oh, thank God. One last match. Uh, bonjour, Monsieur Hagen. I wondered when you would be arriving. At least now you can do your job. Pardon, Monsieur. I have just been assaulted. I want him arrested. I am afraid it is not as simple as that. I merely witnessed you standing up from the ground. This is ridiculous. You know very well what he did. Uh, perhaps you could elaborate on what instigated the altercation. I should have known you wouldn't make things easy. I have met Monsieur Demir. He does not seem one to physically assault someone unless provoked. I hope you're not implying that I started it. I am only stating what I have seen. I was having a private conversation with Angeline. When he interrupted and struck me, that is all there is to know. I would not act any other way. Well, unless I am provoked. You have grown rather close with the Vandenbosch family, it seems. What has my relationship with the family got to do with anything? Why are you even here, officer? Detective. And I was invited by Mademoiselle Angeline personally. Seems to be mistake after mistake with that girl. Of course I do. What a stupid question. He is scum. Him and his whole family. If I had my way, he wouldn't have even stepped foot in this house. Officer Poirot, are you going to do something about him or not? It is Detective Poirot. And if you refuse to answer my questions, I do not see how I can continue. I just don't know what she sees in him. Angeline could do so much better. I don't think she realizes what she is getting herself into. I can't imagine her living a happy life with that... rogue. I see. Merci, monsieur, for your honest opinion. Whether I agree or not. I shall leave you to your cigar and return to the party.
Monsieur Sterling, I trust the preparations are progressing since our last meeting. Please, Detective. Archibald is fine. Everything is in order now. Are you ready to join the party? You are head butler of this house. It is a position that warrants respect, and I shall continue to give it, Monsieur Sterling. And I must admit, it is the smell from the kitchen that has my attention more than the party itself. Rehana is quite the cook, but it will still be some time. Maybe you'd like to enjoy a drink while you wait? Some of the guests are already in the salon to your left. And the remaining guests are in the library on the first floor. I will be sure to explore both. Merci. Dinner will be served in the dining room, but the rest of the evening is yours to enjoy. You have all certainly been working hard, it seems. Oh, very hard. The lady of the house wanted everything a certain way, and that's how it was to be done. It is my responsibility to look after the house and staff, not to resolve petty disputes. I cannot imagine he will be in any mood to attend the party. He often has a cigar to calm down, and if that doesn't relax him, that temperature outside surely will. Merci. You have been most helpful. <laughs> I told you, you're barking up the wrong tree. I'm not a reporter. But you're going to want to hear this. You could interview me now. And why would I want to spend my evening doing that? The world needs to know. You want to sell papers? I want the truth to be known. Win-win. Mm, I came here to enjoy myself, not to hear a second string version of... I was there. I saw the whole thing, including who was ruining the show. All right, I'll bite. Let's talk later. Oh. 
Are you a guest of Mademoiselle Angeline or Monsieur Demir? Do I know you? Where are my manners? I am Hercule Poirot. The lawman. Uh, oui, monsieur. Detective Poirot. And you are? Ernesto da Silva. A pleasure, monsieur. I'm a man of business. I see. Is there a particular area of business that is your focus? Overseas investments, international relations. I also own a number of factories in the city. Très bien. Monsieur has many talents. We work together as partners, yes. You must know the Van den Bosch family well, then. I help Cassandra, rather, Madame Van den Bosch, if and when she needs me. I did, but frankly I have no time for childish school fights. You are not aware of the circumstances that started it then? I heard something about a cigar. Only Felix would be petty enough to get riled up by something so menial. A cigar? Yes, Monsieur Demir had one of Felix's precious cigars. If you ask me, they won't be the real thing anyway. Distinguished gentlemen. <laughs> there was two alpha males going head to head. Master Gideon came out the victor. Surely we have passed the days where shows of unnecessary brute strength impress anyone. When it comes to the protection of a woman, we are far from it. Man will always return to their most primitive form. Mademoiselle Angeline, the Major has no place to feel threatened. Monsieur Gideon is to become her husband. And he has spent the last however many years supporting them, as he calls it, clutching on to whatever he can. Merci for your time. It has been most intriguing. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Likewise. You're not from around here, are you? My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a friend of Mademoiselle, soon to be Madame, Angeline. I see. Jacqueline Conrad. No doubt you've heard the name before. I am rather embarrassed to say I have not, Madame. No need for the Madame. I'm not married. Just call me Jackie. Oui, Jackie. Seriously? You don't know who I am? My sincerest apologies. And I thought you Europeans were meant to be cultured. Here's the thing. I'm one of those people you want to know, and not be on the wrong side of. Uh, perhaps it would be wise for me to remain on your good side. It's the best place to be. You wouldn't believe what a couple of positive stories can do for a family name, or a career. And that is what you have done for the Van den Bosch family? A little help goes a long way, and from what I have seen, the ladies deserve some positive support. 
I heard, and it doesn't surprise me. There will always be someone trying to get something out of someone else. People are only out to help themselves. That is a rather pessimistic way of thinking. But it's the truth. And in my experience, more often than not, it's someone the victim knows, and knows pretty well. You make me question those I consider friends. And maybe you should. If you have something you don't want the world knowing, just keep it to yourself. That's what we call eavesdropping. Uh, pardon. I didn't mean to pry. And with respect, I don't think it's really any of your business. I must take my leave. Allow me to introduce myself. Hercule Poirot. Hugo Beckers. A pleasure. I hope I am not disturbing you. I often find myself at a loose end at parties such as these. I've never been referred to as a loose end before. But it is always good to make a new acquaintance. There is no better way to understand one's purpose in life. I stand up for the workers that cannot do it themselves. You work with a union? Union leader, well, that is my formal title. But I see myself as more than just that. So much more. I am the face of the people. A voice in the void when there is none. Very spirited. You have quite the way with worlds. In my line of work, it is essential. Some fight with their fists, but I believe words are the ultimate weapon. I have been working with Gideon for quite some time. We are doing great things together. Great things. I was not aware he was part of the Union. Well, he's not exactly. But he is an ally in the battle we face. Without his support, our uphill struggle would surely be a climb. Hopefully my talks with De Silva will help him see the light. I don't know what you think you heard, but it was a private matter and I appreciate if you kept it to yourself. I can assure you, Monsieur Beckers, your conversation is exactly that, yours. Then maybe we should just leave it there. Merci. If I find myself at a loss again, I shall certainly return. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. What a revelation! of the puzzle are finally coming together.
Aha. Ah. Monsieur Demir, we meet again. What did I tell you? Call me Zack. You found your room all right then? I did, and the charming room it is. <laughs> I don't know if I would call mine charming, but if I drink enough, it won't matter. That's okay. At least you actually care. Not like most of the others here. I'm the groom-to-be's older, more handsome brother. Ah, oui. I see the resemblance now. How wonderful that you can celebrate this occasion together. I'll stop you there. The only wonderful thing about this celebration is the free food and drink. You are not pleased for your brother. Uh, Angeline seems nice enough, but marriage is not for me. What is there to gain from tying yourself to someone for the rest of your life? Besides the money. Recently, not a great deal. Well, <laughs> except for enjoying myself. I was once a field medic in the military. But those days are over. A noble occupation. Did you not want to make it your career? It wasn't my decision to make. I certainly don't miss the battlefield, <laughs> that's for sure. Ah, uh, I'm sure he's fine. You don't need to worry about him. Always the knight in shining armor. Riding in to save the day. Saving the day from who, exactly? Well... If Gedeon is the knight in the fairy tale, Felix is the dragon. Felix the Major! Ha! <laughs> Always there, thinking he is better. Just because he was a major, we all know how he got there. In his mind, that puts him at the top of the chain. Gedeon said they were the Majors, but I didn't think he would miss just one. Ah, it was you that took the cigar. Pfft. Me? Okay, detective, you twisted my arm. It was me. But I didn't even get a chance to smoke it. Gedeon snatched it out of my hand. I'm sure he could afford to replace it. Perhaps it is best I take my leave. Allow me to introduce myself. Hercule Poirot. Detective Hercule Poirot? I heard we were being joined by one of the King's finest officers. Oui, madame. I see my name precedes me. Comtesse Margot de Vos. Charmed, I'm sure. It is I who is charmed. Handsome, well-mannered, and a man of the law. I did not expect such a fine caliber of gentleman at this party. Countess, your compliments are enough to make a young detective blush. I fill my time mostly with charity work. 
the number of those less fortunate only continues to grow. How very admirable. One must remain humble. I have been a close friend to the Vandenbosch family for, well, heaven knows how long. You must have known the late Viscount then. Indeed, we had been friends since our school days. His passing was very hard on both Cassandra and young Angeline. I became a sort of protector of them both after his death. A guardian angel, if you will. You will find Felix at the center of any trouble, especially when it concerns the ladies of the house. I understand he has made himself quite at home here. <laughs> what an understatement. He thinks his friendship with Cassandra entitles him to anything and everything in the house, including certain opinions of how young Angeline lives her life. He does not approve of Monsieur Demir? You'd have to ask him, or rather, speak with Gideon's brother. He will have something to say about Felix, I am sure. A strapping young man. Angeline has found herself a good one. They certainly make a handsome couple. Speaking with them both, it is plain to see, even to one that is unexperienced in such emotions, that there is a great deal of love between them. When they are together, it is obvious for all to see, even at such a young age. But who are we to judge what the heart wants? He would say that. I mean, financially, yes. But what else does that man have to offer? I cannot imagine Madame Vandenbosch would be one to request financial help. After Edwin, the Viscount, died, the family was left in a rather unfavorable position. She wasn't requesting, chérie. She was begging. I see. Let's just keep that between us. It's a rather sore subject for her. Work with? I built it from the ground up, detective. My admiration continues to grow. While my husband, the Honorable Count de Vos, is always busy with his duties, I found myself at rather a loose end. I could not bear wasting my days with no purpose. And one day, while shopping in the city, I noticed the abundance of young women living and begging on the streets. Dirty and hungry, without a franc to their name. It is horrifying to think of how so many must live their lives while others live a life of such selfish opulence. I hope that was not a backhanded comment on the life I live, detective. Uh, far from it, Countess. You are using your wealth to better the lives of the less fortunate. It is commendable work you do. It is, isn't it? It has been a pleasure conversing. I look forward to our next tête-à-tête. -tête.